theory. Venus poses other huge problems for evolution as well. For example, Venus's surface appears quite young. The entire surface appears to be fresh. There's no record anywhere of billions of years of erosion or chemical weathering. Evolutionists are forced to speculate that somehow, for some unknown reason, the entire planet was resurfaced by volcanic activity not that long ago. This means the entire planet's crust would be submerged under lava all at the same time. Why did this happen? Nobody knows. How did this happen? Nobody knows that either. But it must have happened, they say, because we know evolution is true. How long ago did this event supposedly happen? Most planetary scientists believe Venus was resurfaced about 500 million years ago. They believe this because Venus has about a thousand large impact craters on its surface, and it would take 500 million years or so to accumulate this many craters. So even though they admit Venus's surface looks young, they will insist that it's at least 500 million years old. But they're making two big assumptions here. Number one, they're assuming they know how often new craters form today. And number two, they're assuming this rate has been the same for at least 500 million years. However, both of these assumptions have been shown to be invalid. Studies on our moon and elsewhere in the solar system have shown that the evolutionary cratering model is wrong. We'll talk more about that later in this video. We see then that even though evolutionists insist Venus is old, all the evidence we have makes it look quite young. You know, I picked up on that trumpet announcing the arrival of that asteroid, you know, just watching it again this time. I was making notes before where I got here watching this thing, and, and uh, I said, well, I got a feeling that these asteroids are going to keep showing up in the film, and one of the brothers here has seen it, and he said, yep, you know, asteroids are invoked for a lot of problems. Uh, you know, whatever you can use for your hypotheses, go right ahead and use them. So Venus should be a lot like Earth, but it's got no magnetic field, made out of the same stuff, around the same place. Why doesn't it have a magnetic field? Why is it so smooth, the surface of the planet? They have no idea. They've got to come up with these different wild theories that they have no evidence for. And, you know... Well, again, all these theories are designed and based to fit the evolutionary model. Exactly. Built on complete assumptions. It's a absolutely ludicrous. You know what I, s I see in this, Mike? I, I see this great creator creating these planets to baffle the evolutionists and also to show his incredible beauty for those who want to seek through science. It, it's... it's the, the complete difference in each and every planet is so unique to someone seeking through scientific evidence. It's like, here you go. I'm, 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 I did it in such a, uh, a way that you can't fathom, but yet I made it to where you can understand it. Yeah, last week we looked at the duck-billed platypus, which has <laughs> all the features of, of every type of creature, you know, reptile, bird, mammal. Uh, it's got a beak that senses things, electrical, electrical sensory kind of right. Geiger counter kind of thing to find its food. And I mean, it's just so unique in so many ways. It could have come from fish or reptile or mammal, or it's got fur or birds, or it's got all this weird well, that stuff. That just and, might prove evolution and, there, Mike. <laughs> no, it, there's nothing that it could Which have evolved from. Which direction did it can come it, from? It, yeah, it could have come from any one of them, but there's no links anywhere for anything like it. But yet it needs all those organisms to survive right now. And, and the fellow in that film, um, Dave Nutting, Nutting, was saying, you know, God must have said, yeah, this is real. This has been a fun day. This has been fun <laughs> creating the platypus, and uh, and it, like you said, he, I think he's having just as much fun creating the solar system to baffle the minds of people. We're so inferior in our understanding, obviously, to a, a God, a Creator. And again, Einstein, Isaac Newton, Michael Faraday, Robert Boyle, all these greats of science said there's got to be a mind behind it. Newton, Faraday, Boyle were convinced who it was that prophecy proved it. Einstein wasn't so sure, but he didn't really study religion much. He said that. Jay? Well, 
let's just look at what we saw tonight. Two planets, Mercury and Venus, and yet they're completely, almost completely opposite, but they're not. They, they don't sustain life, but Mercury is dense, has a magnetic field. Venus has no magnetic field, no tectronic plates, is not dense, no moon. It, it, that's just the first two. Right. And, yeah. and, 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 as we, and in the middle of all these planets, scientifically, as we know and we search, there's only one that sustains life perfectly. Yeah, the Earth, and we've, we saw a great film on that, The Privileged Planet, but we'll get to Earth maybe next week. We'll see. Jeff, how are you doing tonight? Pretty good. You remember me. Pardon? Hi, Jeff. Yeah. You, you remember me? Did you make, I, I take it you, you didn't go through with what you said you were going to do or were thinking about? <laughs> well, let's not get into that. Yeah, I, we remember you, Jeff. Um, yeah, no, no, I didn't. I mean, it's still Hey, how come you mind. didn't leave, you know, we were trying to get your phone number last time. What happened? We just got disconnected. Somehow I didn't do it. I'll leave it to you tonight. Okay, yeah. good. I got a new phone number. Good. So good. give give us a an things, update. Are things turning up we, a little bit? You got about three minutes. Give us an update, okay. Jeff. Uh, the update is I got a new place to live. I went to Victory Outreach for a little while and found that that wasn't uh, what I was looking for, and uh, struggled for a couple of weeks, and then just yesterday, as a matter of fact. The assistant pastor of the church that I go to opened his house for me to be able to move in and pay him some rent. And I'm thinking things are going to look up. Great. Is, isn't your Savior awesome? Excuse me? Your Savior, is he not awesome? He is awesome. I was thinking about it last night laying in bed. I was actually trying to find you guys. And uh, I was thinking about from the time that I got out of jail till present. Um, I was just talking to Darwin, the assistant pastor of the church that I go to, that there's no humanly way that I could have planned going from going from the top clear to the bottom and then from the bottom not knowing how I was going to get off the streets to the route that it took me to get to where I am now. Yeah, and, and, and he, it, you know, he was sustaining you the whole time. Yes, he was. And he never, you know, he said, I know my sheep, and they hear my voice, and they follow me. And, and ha had have I just trusted in God and not worried about things, and, how much the, easier it would have been on me. Yeah, and the cool thing is, Jeff, he never stopped trusting in you and loving you. Right. And, and you know, we learn that through experience. Mm -hmm. You know, when I got into difficulties as a young believer, you learn as time goes on that he pulls you out of that if you just keep on focusing on him the more you focus away from him the more trouble you get into Jane hey, hey Jeff we, we have another caller we, we want to give him at least a minute if Absolutely. you could call us back next week leave your number so we can get together and continue praising and praying okay then well, make sure awesome. make sure guys you don't lose him um, don't and, try and switch to the other call you know forget the other call we've only got it's a Dominique or something, you know. We only got a minute left. Try and call next week. We can't really go anywhere with a minute or so to, to talk about anything. Um, so we hope you enjoyed the program, uh, those of you who watch it. Uh, yeah, and I can't wait to move on to the next planets, really, Mike. This is just beautiful stuff. I got to get, get you a copy of that. Y you do. <laughs> and Jeff, thanks for calling. Dominique, we'll hope to hear from you next week. If not, get on our website and... Mike especially will contact you because I am computer illiterate. I, I don't mind meeting in person and, and talking on the phone, but computer I'm not good at. We want to thank all our viewers tonight. We want to thank um, everyone associated down here at Portland Communications Media, our, our brothers Bill and Bill and Eric and, and Frank. I, I can never thank God enough for these guys who are free willing bond slaves of Christ to come down here and be a part of this body pr to present truth to whoever is hungry for it, Mike. It's, it's a, a beautiful thing. Um, we love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching.